I'm about to say something that might be controversial, but it really shouldn't be. And that is the click should not end your dog's behavior. Did you see that? Autographed by Bob Bailey. How cool is that? Stick with me on this. For the next two minutes, I'd like to be your dog training coach. If you're brand new to dog training, I know you're going to learn something. And if you've been around the block a few times, I'm pretty confident you still might get some different insight from a sports trainer's viewpoint into your dog training. Okay, let's just say you are a trainer who wants to train this dog to put these front paws onto this rock. That's your assignment. As a dog trainer, you're ready. You've got your clicker duct tape backwards to your hand. You've got your bait pouch filled with handy dandy tasty treats. And your hair's tied back so it won't get in your eyes when you're training. Let's go. Okay, the moment is upon us. The dog hits his front paws to the rock. The trainer clicks her clicker, marking that moment for the dog. Having heard the clicker, the dog then goes in front of the trainer, bouncing up and down, ready for his treat, maybe even helping the trainer by digging his way into the bait bag. The trainer, oblivious to the dog's effort, reaches into her bait bag, gets a treat, and rewards the dog for a job well done. You may be saying, well, Susan, what's wrong with any of that? That looked like a fantastic training session. Well, here's the thing. Reinforcement is a process. It is not an isolated moment in time. So sure, the clicker isolated the moment the dog's paws hit the rock and told the dog, this is what I'm looking for. Do more of this and you can earn reinforcement. Now, knowing that reinforcement is a process, let's look at the process. Sure, the clicker told the dog, I like when you put your paws on that rock. However, the cookie is the reinforcement the dog ultimately wanted, and the cookie reinforces all of those behaviors that happen after the click. And so as a sport dog trainer, we want behaviors to be clean. We don't want any Adelon behaviors. We don't want our dog jumping up at us, diving into our bait bag to get a cookie. You know what? You can say, oh, Susan, I'm just training my dog to be a family pet. This affects how efficient your training is, meaning it's going to take you a lot longer to teach your dog to do the same thing. And when things take longer for the dog to learn, it's more frustrating. More frustrating for you, more frustrating for your dog. So think about the process of reinforcement and see how you can make things clearer and faster for your dog and you. Okay, Tater Salad, there's dog owners who have questions about the video where I talk about the process of reinforcement. Are you up for doing a little demo? Yeah, I figured you would be. <laughs> so the question is, how do we get the dog to stay in position after the click? Okay. Let's talk reinforcement process. Now there's a beginning about selecting behavior, et cetera, et cetera. You can find out more about that on my podcast, shapebydog.com. Just do a, a search on reinforcement process, but let's talk about the end. And it comes down to the delivery and the placement of the reinforcement after you have marked it, clicked or given a marker word. And so the delivery, are you ready or are you reaching into your bait bag breaking up your cookie and then absentmindedly handing it to the dog because you think the click or the marker word does all the work. You want to have a very, very efficient process between mark, delivery, and placement of reinforcement. That means that that reinforcement very likely needs to be in your hand. And if it's a toy or something you're throwing, it's probably already cocked back, ready to throw. And I would throw it so it, it lands in front of the dog, not to lure them to do the jump, but to be reinforced after the fact. The moment you select the part of the behavior you want to reinforce, because it's a process. So if I was going to reinforce the beginning of weave poles, I would get my reinforcement in right between the two first two poles. Placement of reinforcement should help build the behavior that you're trying to create. So I'm gonna shape Tater to put his back feet up on a target. He already knows how to do his front feet. Now I'm gonna do it bad at first. I'm gonna get him to come out of position after the click to get his reinforcement. And then I'm gonna show you the difference. I have the reinforcement ready in my hand. Now, if your dog doesn't, doesn't understand it's your choice, they may be trying to maul your hands for food. Go and check out It's Your Choice on my podcast as well. What you're gonna do, you're gonna click 
and you're going to quickly get reinforcement into the dog. If you're very quick about it and then give them a release word. So control behaviors are built on the strength of the dog's understanding of what ends the behavior. In this case, I'm just going to say search and toss a cookie in the, in the corner. I'm going to continue to do this, change my body position. And now I have a dog who completely understands just because I click doesn't mean that you should move. Delivery and placement of the reinforcement. Two biggies when we're talking about the end of that reinforcement process. I hope that helps.